Welcome back, YouTube. So I know I'm a little late to this party, but you guys ought to know by now that I'm always late to the party. So I'm going to do what I like to call a Jim Sterling. I'm going to play a bunch of copyright material in my video because as soon as I put Nintendo stuff in there, they're going to copyright this video anyway. So I might as well just, you know, put as much as I can in there and let them all fight over who gets it right first. So Nintendo's Switch um, presentation was sometime last week. I can't remember. I did watch it. I took some notes on things that I thought were okay, things that I thought were bad. We need to talk about this because when you had a bunch of YouTubers like Boogie and Rich from Review Tech come out and say it was going to suck, that it was going to fail, I was the first, I, well, I wasn't the first one, but I was one of the few who came out and said, well, I mean, if they market it right, it could be a success. If they push the portability, it could be a success. But after seeing the presentation, all my hope is lost, man. So, let's break this up into sections, because I know your attention spans, you know, only so big. I'll, I'll try not to make this too long, but I'm trying to talk a little bit slower now. I'm trying to, uh, the reason I talk fast most of the time is because I have kids and they'll run in on me while I'm trying to record or something like that, you know, in my house. And uh, I try to get it out as fast as I can. Before my kids run in here, start yelling and screaming and all kinds of stuff, you know, because I'm, I'm in my bedroom. So <laughs> let's talk about this, okay? First off, the presentation. presentation overall to me and this is coming from a guy who's a self-proclaimed nerd seemed like a bunch of nerds trying to act cool uh it it came off a little campy and a little goofy and it didn't really work for me i mean maybe he, it worked for some people apparently it did because the nintendo switch is sold out on pre-order right now but it came off a little bit too much. Like they were really trying to push their vision, but in a very cutesy kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's just weird. It was weird. Not normal Japanese weird, just weird. Um, It was like millennials with hair buns weird. I mean, it was pretty weird. So, <clears throat> that was, that was, part of it that didn't really gel with me. Uh, I did like the HD rumble. I felt that that was, if it works the way they want it to work and the way it's supposed to work, it would be a really cool idea, really a uh, leap forward in terms of how we interact with games. Uh, deeper immersion is what everybody's always looking for. That's why VR is out there. That's why you have dual shock. You know, when you shoot a gun, you want to you want to feel the rumble of a gun firing in your hand. Um, that's why you know all this tech is out there to try to immerse yourself further into a game. And the HD rumble seems to take it a bit further. The uh, presentation they showed was supposedly if the Joy-Con is supposed to represent a glass of ice. You can feel the ice cube in, inside the glass of ice shaking. And you can feel, you know, multiple ones shaking if there's multiple ice cubes in there. So if that works the way it's supposed to do, then, you know, I can see that technology growing into other systems and people starting to utilize that more often. But, Overall, I felt the presentation was a little bit too cartoonish, 
for my taste. Um, but yeah, that's my thoughts on the presentation alone. So we need to get to accessories. The accessories are outlandish. When you're charging like 50 bucks, it's $49.99 for the Joy-Con, just the one Joy-Con controller. Or eighty bucks for, or seventy bucks for a set. Nintendo knows they can get by with this because it's Nintendo branded. It's, it's been Nintendo branded uh, accessories, and that's sad, man. That's sad, and it's eighty bucks for a quote unquote elite controller that looks like an Xbox One ripoff controller, basically. Uh, but you know, I gotta remember that Nintendo's a toy company through and through, and so they're gonna charge more for accessories than say a Sony or a Microsoft would, because Sony and Microsoft have other things besides just PlayStation and Xbox they produce. They don't have to rely heavily on gaming. I mean, I know Nintendo produces other things, toys. Uh. For the most part. But when it comes to game systems, this is all they really have. This is a DS. So, I feel as though the accessories are a little bit too steep. I think somebody with a lot of money and a lot of, uh, with a lot of money could, you know, be okay with this. But for the everyday consumer, this is just a little bit. A little bit egregious to me. And so that brings me to the online service. The online service. They see what Sony and Microsoft have done for the past few years. Which in reality is egregious upon itself. They charge you $60 a year to play online. Now that's with you owning the game, owning the system, paying for the cable or DSL or fiber optic internet connection you have. Then on top of all that, you've got to pay for a service to play online with. But they give you two free games each month. And at least with Sony, the game's pretty shit. Sorry, Sony fanboys. Sorry, Sony. They are. You really need to give us more shit than just indie games. Things that I'll never play. I download them and they just sit there and I'll delete them whenever I don't want them. I mean, of course I'm going to download them. They're free. You know? But uh, $60 a year. If Nintendo goes that route, that's $180 a year. All three systems. <laughs> That's just outrageous, guys. Uh, especially when, with Nintendo at least, you have to have a phone app to talk to each other with. And they, they won't even let you download Netflix and watch Netflix on the Switch. Uh, so I say the app, the app range is going to be limited on the Switch as well. Which is surprising because it's basically NVIDIA Shield. With a Nintendo operating system on it. <laughs> I just can't get over this, guys. This, this is terrible. This is corporate greed at its finest. With all the accessory costs. The online service costs. And what do you get in return? You get to rent one Nintendo Classic a month. You don't even own it. You rent it for a month. Really? That's what you're going to give us? You're going to allow us... Oh, thank you, Nintendo Gods. Thank you so much for allowing me to rent a Nintendo game for a month. They know they have this backlog of games. This gold mine they're sitting on. They're wasting it. They've got NES and SNES classics that I grew up with. Sitting in their back catalog, and they just won't do the damn thing with them. Besides, drip feed them to the audience. 
and they'll let you rent it for a month. Okay. That brings me to the marketing. There's confusing marketing on this. Nintendo has been for years now using gimmicks to sell systems. With the Wii, it was nunchuck and uh, you know motion. The Wii U, nobody knows what the hell that was supposed to be. Now with the Nintendo Switch, you got the HD Rumble, and the the fact that you could pull the system out of a dock and you know play your Zelda. Or your Skyrim on your couch, which is cool. I'm not saying it's not. It's just if they were to market this thing as more of a portable system that you could just put in your put on your TV, I think it would work a lot better. But it's they're marketing it as a party machine. It's confusing. It's like they're marketing it as a get together experience, uh, kind of. And then they have online features as well. There is it's confusing. It's really confusing. It's it's like, why don't you just market it as a portable machine and slowly start to regress your DS line in favor of the Switch? No, no, they want to have their cake and eat it too. All of this combined. Guys, I cannot recommend this system. I cannot recommend going out and getting a Switch. If you, even if you have kids, I know it's going to do well. Nintendo always does. They, their name is embedded in the back of people's brains by now. You know, they have been for many years. They saved gaming, so people owe a lot of allegiance to Nintendo. But I, for one, feel as though they don't know what the consumer wants. They don't know how to talk to the consumer anymore. I feel as though if anyone is going to put console gaming in the grave, it's Nintendo. Because we're all fed up with buying a game then having to buy DLC. That's $60 and then $50 extra for DLC. It don't amount to a lot of content. We have to buy, if you play Call of Duty, it's even worse. You have to buy Call of Duty packs in order to get anything good out of the supply drops. Uh, it's really in the pre-orders. The pre-order market is bad. You pre-order a game and it don't deliver on what it promised. Take No Man's Sky, for instance. That game didn't deliver. There's a lot of games that people didn't buy last year because of that game. I think that Titanfall 2 and Dishonored 2 things of that nature didn't do really well last year because of No Man's Sky. So people are fed up. More and more people are going away from console and going to PC. This generation is going to be my last console generation because I'm just fed up. I'm done. I'm tired. Uh, Console gaming has become almost a nightmare to the consumer because all the money you have to spend out that you really don't have. In the telling of a recession, it's it really rough. There's a lot of YouTube gamers out there who have games that I've never played that I would like to play, but I just don't have the money for. There's a lot of people out there who showcase off these games and make you want to buy them. And if you're an average gamer, you can't buy everything. You can't get everything. The average day consumer is just done. We're tired. We're tired of paying $60 a year to pay for your online service to connect to other players. And you know you, we have to pay it because most games these days are all multiplayer games. We're tired of paying for DLC, pre-ordering, the complete bullshit line we get that the reason we charge you so much money is because 
the gaming market as it stands right now is still recovering. There's some studios out there who don't recover because they make bad business choices, but that's not our problem. We want better games. We want better service. We want better consumer service. And Nintendo's just not giving it to us. They're, they're the worst of them all. I mean, you have to download an app to speak with other players online. You got to pay for online service and rent a ROM a month. It's outrageous. We're just finished with this. I don't see the Nintendo Switch doing well after the initial launch because it will do well at launch. Nintendo always does. But I don't, I see this going the Wii U route. Maybe even, you know, maybe even bombing out the, uh, sooner than that. That's just my thoughts on it, guys. I know there's a lot of Nintendo fanboys who's going to hate on this video, and I don't care. If you really cared about your company, put them to the task. Let them know how much you are disappointed in them for partaking in corporate greed, for charging for bullshit service that don't give you anything when their service has been free for the past two console generations. And it was pretty bad then, too. That's just my thoughts on it, guys. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace out.